Well, hello there. How are you? Welcome to Ensuring Your Well-Being. This is Dennis James, the Bike and Dance and Insurance Man. Glad you're here today. Anyhow, today we're going to be having a conversation in reference to personal life insurance and business life insurance. All right. The benefits of it and the value, which is what you really need to know. All right. A lot of people do not understand uh, how you, the value that it really brings, and um, especially to loved ones, or it could be a lot of the living benefits uh, for family and also with your business. There's a lot of uh, benefits when uh, you have it set up for your business also. But I'm going to start with the personal life insurance, and we're going to go from there. All right, first of all, you know, life insurance, it's going to provide capital, right, when you need it upon the death of the insured, all right? So if you're the wage earner, right, that's where you need to have life insurance in place, especially if you have a family, all right, where we're talking about personal life insurance. And what that does, it's going to give you a, upon a premature death, it gives you a guaranteed uh, income. It's a stream of income like that, tax-free, meaning you don't pay income taxes on it. All right, uh, right? So uh, the other thing uh, with that, Funeral expenses, all right? When, when something like that happen, happens, it becomes very devastating to, to everyone, as family members, all right? So um, having that income to cover the expensive, right? So you got your fu- funeral expenses, you have medical expenses, <clears throat> and a lot of times there's debt, you know, and that could be credit cards or some kind of debt reduction, uh, you know, it could be to help pay for your mortgage or runners or, you know, um, if you didn't plan properly, that could be probate costs. And um, depending where you're at with your uh, lifestyle, it could even be estate taxes. All right. So um, very important to have in place. And you always get that uh because life insurance is race off, rated off based off medical history, your driving record, you know, what's your driving record like, you know, do you have many points? All those things come in, in, in into play for you. And um, weight, history, you know, that type of thing, because of the medical underwriting, it's not like it used to be. It goes a lot quicker now. But at the same time, you don't need to hide anything because it's all in your records. Uh, You know, and if you're older, a lot of times they're going to look at, hey, you know, when does last time you had a routine physical? A lot of, um, they want to know that also. All right. And then, you know, we we talk about um, non-working spouses. Okay. Now, think about that. Even though they they don't have wages come in, the the truth of the matter is upon a premature death of a non-working spouse that is taking care of children, right? That is becomes just as critical as um, having life insurance. Think about it. Upon a premature death, what happens? Uh, all of a sudden, you have to start paying for taking them to school, right, with the, the, that type of care. Okay, I haven't had kids. My, my kids are grown up and all that, right? But there's for sure a lot of the functions provided for the cost of care. And actually, you know, to pay for child care and home housekeeping, and um, to get them back and forth and all the different types of um you know, recreational that they're in. So that uh, there's, uh, a, a, they say that a f- wage worker as a, as a spouse, you could calculate 
that out to being $180,000 a year plus, you know, by adding inflation in. Because when you start looking at what it costs to take your, your kids, a lot of times I see that where parents are just staying home because it, instead of going out and getting employment because it costs more just for the education behind it on, on that. So, um should they have life insurance in place? Absolutely, right? Just like, um, you know, we, we talk about child care. You know, should I have life insurance on my, on my children? Uh, you know, and that's never an easy ch- subject, right? I mean, we can never see our own children passing away or dying, but we do know it happens, all right? And it doesn't matter what age, um, you know, accidents happen or come down with some type of uh, medical terminal illness. And um, so that's why I have life insurance in place. And there's a lot of times what families will do is they will have a individual policy on the wage earner and then on the spouse. Um, you would have a insured spouse rider on there. And then you also, when we're talking about children, you would have children riders on there. Now, the thing when you do that on the insured, insured rider for your spouse, a lot of times you can save money because of um, uh, paying policy fees and all that other um, benefit. It just depends, right? Everybody's different about that. Just like if you're the insured and you may or not not be married, right? You could add a child rider on there and what that child rider will do, it will give you uh, life insurance anywhere from, you know, you could take $1,000 up to $15,000. And now let's just say you have two children, three, five children. When you have that in place, that child rider, it covers, uh, let's just say you have five children, it covers all five children. So let's just say you have 15,000. Upon the death of each one of them, there's $15,000 worth of life insurance in place. All right. Um, Also, it when and usually the way that works all insurance carriers are a little different but it's up to you can have them on there up until uh, age 18 where they can become part of your plan Uh, even though it will cover them to 23 they just can't say if they're 20 years old they can't just go to get on your insurance policy as that rider all right they have to do it um before they're under 18, all right? But it'll cover them up to 23. And then let's just say at 23, they uh, have to come off the plan. There's no longer life insurance under that rider. Well, they can get their own life insurance policy with that insurance carrier. And that insurance carrier, uh, in most cases, will the way it works is they'll give it five times the amount, amount of insurance, right? So... If you had, as as an example, you you, you had ten thousand uh, covering each child, all children, uh, times five is fifty thousand, right? So you're uh, adding that up, or you could, if it was fifteen thousand, right? Uh, what's that come to? Eighty five thousand. So um, all of those added value benefits that you're receiving, like that, and if that child becomes uninsurable and goes to get a, that uh, permanent plan. After they come off yours, it's a guarantee issue, right? So that your child could have, you know, God forbid, but diabetes or cancer or MS, anything. And the at least they're locked in for the five times amount, which really can make a big difference for them, especially if they're going to ever get married and that type of thing. And maybe they can't even get insurance, all right, depending on the uh, uh you know, what's going on with their medical condition. And also, you know, a lot of times people will just take out their own policy. So they'll get a life policy. Obviously, you want it for the wage earner. 
uh, for sure the spouse, you know, and those could be individual policies. And sometimes people will take out their own personal life insurance, even for their kids. And the reason they'll, they'll do that for a lot of reasons, you know, some of the things I just discussed with you, uh, obviously when you get the cost of insurance, when you're really young, that's when you want to get it when you're healthy, right? Cause the cost of insurance is minimal. And, um, and it gives them something that they can own and that type of thing for their self in the future. I remember my mom and dad took out policies on me and my two brothers, right? When we were 18, I mean, we were young and, um, this prudential guy, you know, we sold us a bunch of, sold us policies. And, uh, so we had some life insurance that when, um, they were in our own name and I eventually ended up using it for uh, the cash value that was built up. Uh, so, um, you know, I don't know. I had a couple thousand bucks in there and, uh, you know, I was still really young, like eight, 17 years old and I 18, whatever I was at that time. And I was able to convert that, uh, or I could have kept the life insurance in place. Okay, so there's a lot of values of doing that. Now, when you want to calculate personal life insurance, uh, you know, things that, that uh, you look at for needs is you want to look at existing assets, you know, what's your current income, and, um, uh, and, and that would be also future income, you know, with your financial needs. Now, there's rules of thumb with this, all right? Um, now, if... If you're the wage earner, a lot of times what they'll look at, just so, a, 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 you know, an idea for it, you want to have six to eight times um, whatever your gross income is. All right. So, uh, right, pretty simple math. Have 100000 uh, That's what you're making. Well, you know, you're going to want to have somewhere between six hundred and eight, eight hundred thousand dollars. That's a rule of thumb. And then a lot of times they're going to look at different ways of calculating that out for you. All right. Um, you know, there's uh, what they call the second thing would be like, you know, your human life value concept. That's another way of doing it or just a, a needs analysis. And what that's looking at, that's given a, uh, a picture of what you're going to be your income today, what's your income for the future, you know, where's in inflation come into play, what's, a, you know, with your mortgage, your rent, that type of thing, you know, all b and it, it, it looks at a lot of different things, you, you know, your income needs, uh, projections you become disabled or you become unemployed, all right, that always plays a factor. And um, all those things come into play. Then the, the thing uh, about looking at also, uh, right, you're married and then all of a sudden, you know, uh, your husband passes away. He's the wage earner. Now, there, what happens is there's going to be benefits that come in under survivor benefits, all right? And that's going to cover your children up to age 18, all right? But eight, after 18, that ends, all right? They call what they call a blackout period, all right? And then what also happens is as the spouse with your Social Security and all that, all right, that also, uh, that blackout period ends, uh and it begins again at age uh, 60. Okay, so those are things to consider when you talk to your in insurance professional or uh, your financial advisor, he's going to be able to do that, right? So he can give you a rule of thumb, like I mentioned, you know, or he could get into the human value concept or... Um, the family uh, needs analysis, which is normally the ones that are used the most uh, today. But that's, again, going to depend on your uh, whoever is working with you on your insurance and needs, your professional advisor. All right. So on the other side of the coin is business insurance, right? And that's for business owners, all right, when events are happening Without a plan, all right, it creates financial hardship, 
All right. We know that life insurance can be used for key person insurance, all right, funding buy sell agreements. And they're also used for non qualified plans, uh, track, retain key people, that type of thing. And we'll, we'll get into that a little bit. But when, when you're doing that, you're going to, in, and I, Indemnify, never say that word right, indemnify your, uh, a financial loss, right? It's just like any life insurance, right? Uh, it becomes a tax-free benefit, and um, it's there when you need it the most. Now, business owners are going to take it out. A lot of times they take it out as key person insurance, and I really think uh, – that uh, makes it really uh, so important in a lot of different ways. But think about it, right? With key person, upon the death of a key employee, what's going to happen to your business, right? I mean, uh, all of a sudden you have this person that's, right, bringing in all kinds of sales, and then all of a sudden he passes away. Who's going to, you have to have, where's the money going to come from to replace him? All right, and what about um, getting, right, if you're going to pay for a recruit, right, um, to that, you, you know, sometimes it's not that easy to do. But when, when you're doing that, um, they're going to want 15 to 25% of whatever uh, on a commission basis to find somebody that's going to fit the need of that key employee. Now, you know, we know that is easier said than done. Uh, you know, uh, the other thing a lot of times, you know, that I didn't mention is creditors, right? So if you have credit and then all of a sudden they know your key person dies, and you know what, the truth of the matter, you could be that key person, all right? But uh, we're talking about, you know, people that are, Without them, uh, the business could go under, right? Uh, so there's a lot of things to consider when it comes to uh, protecting yourself if that key person leaves the business, right? So there's, I'm going to talk about how you can help uh, attract, retain, and recruit, you know, keep key people. And uh, the other thing is buy sell funding, all right, with life insurance, right? So you can have an agreement in place, but that's great, you know, and it's important. You have to have an agreement in place, but without the funding, where is the money going to come from to fund, buy out the other person or other employees, uh, key people of the business, that are partnerships or they could be stockholders in the business, all right? Or it could even be a sole proprietor. So that's where cross, per there's two different types that you could really look at that we're going to discuss here. And the first one is a cross purchase plan, all right? And what that is, is where you're going to have a insurance policy. So let's just, for simple location, you have a, a, a business owner, right? Two owners in the policy. They're going to own a policy on each other based off whatever the value of that business is upon death to pay out to the survivors and then um, to the deceased person that passes is going to right pay off to the um, survivors and then you would own that business free and clear because you sure doesn't want you you don't want to be partners with um your deceased partner uh spouse because that's what would happen it can be, become really a lot of headaches and trouble so when you have it all mapped out and you have the funding of the life insurance right it makes everything uh smooth and that becomes a tax-free benefit. And um, also, um, the other thing is if you have, as an example, three people, then all of a sudden you got to have six policies. Or if you had four people, four people that are part of the ownership or stock in that, that's 12 policies. That becomes an awful lot of policies, right? Because each one of you our owners and beneficiaries on that particular uh, insured, 
All right. So there's other ways of approaching that, and that's what they call the second type, and that's the entity plan. And the entity plan is where you got a business partnership or a corporation, and you agree to buy a insurance policy on whoever's uh, the owners or stockholders are in there, right? So as an example, if you have six people that are stockholders, you know, major stockholders, and they have ownership in the business or, you know, six partners, then that's where an entity would plan, come into play. The business uh, would be the one that pays the premium and uh, is the owner on the policy of each one of you as the insureds. And upon death of uh, one of you or two of you, let's just say one for simple, right, it's going to pay that percentage off, whatever that death benefit is, to the surviving partners. I'm sorry, <laughs> the surviving, uh, usually it's the spouse, loved ones. All right, so that makes it uh, a, a lot smoother that way. And um, the other thing that um, businesses will do is they're going to use non-qualified Plans And when you hear non-qualified plans, that empl- en- enables an employer to provide certain employees, like key employees, selective employees, to have a life insurance policy, a permanent life insurance policy uh, with a certain death benefit. It's going to accumulate cash value on a tax-deferred basis. It can have a lot of living benefits with a, with a long-term care rider which is so important to have long-term care insurance in place. And um, it could be where you put more money into it, just depending on the type of plan. So those types of plans uh, are not qualified. That means that you don't have to offer it to everybody within the business. So if you have 50 employees and you have uh, 10 key people, right, you, that's ways you can offer, and you can offer different different uh, face amounts or percentages with each one of them, whatever you want to do, all right? So it keeps it real clean that way, and you can't get in trouble just like if you had a qualified plan, like a 401k or a SEP, you can't do that, all right? So that's the benefits of um, non-qualified plans. And... Um, these type of arrangements, they're used to recruit, retain, reward employees, you know, usually your top, top employees. And um, they have executive bonus plans, and those executive bonus plans uh, work really well. And you can restrict it, you know, that's where the employee is going to own it and that type of thing. And, uh, or you can have a restrictive employee uh, business plan and the way that works is you have more as the employer you have more control over it all right but the idea is to keep that employee and give them some added value and then they have SERPs or what they call supplemental executive retirement plans and um you know that's just another way of uh setting it up and that's where you know your CPA and your advisor is going to figure out what's the best way to do that and then um, they have what we call split dollar plans and uh, they're set up a couple different ways you could go as an endorsement with it or you could go collateral right and that's where it's between you and that employee and you can have different split arrangements on it and uh, on paying the premium. And that way, so if you have, let's just say I'm a sole proprietor and I have somebody that I want to eventually take over my business that I feel could, would be the right person, we could have a collateral assignment where, you know, I'm paying most of the premium as a business owner now and the employee could be paying some of the PS, uh, the, um, a term, uh, um, the cost of the term insurance, which is very inexpensive. 
and um, over time it gets to where he would be paying more of it and I wouldn't as the employer. But these are ways of um, just being able to, you know, offer to people that are really important within the business. And um, the other thing is the group carve out, right? So let's just say you have 50 employees and you're offering up, you know, up to $50,000 worth of term insurance for each one of them. Right? I mean, it could be less, right? Anywhere from 10 to 50, 50,000 without worrying about any kind of tax consequences. You, you know, you, you could take whoever those key people is and you could create a permanent plan with them. So that becomes a really nice feature there also. Um, when you're doing any type of planning like this, it could be on your personal life insurance or your business life insurance. You're going to want to make sure you have an attorney that's going to, right, have a, they're going to put together the funding, the buy-sell agreement. Right. Or when we're talking about personal, that's having at least the minimum is the will. And then, you know, uh, a trust is always good, uh, important to also eventually get set up if you don't do it right away. And uh, there's a lot of reasons for that, because you don't want to have issues and problems, financial, di you know, dynamics going on or within the business, right, which creates hardship for everybody. So, you know, you want to have a good uh, estate planning attorney or elder law attorney when it comes to um, uh, especially succession planning, depending. Uh, uh, but for sure, estate planning, you know, usually uh, attorneys that are really, really know the business market on how to set up good buy-sell agreements. And when we talk about succession planning, really what you want to think of from when you start it, when you're starting a business, it doesn't sound logical, but it is, it really becomes real, is you almost want to start planning for the succession of the plan, you know, over time, at least going in with that kind of a mindset, knowing that, hey, I'm starting this business and eventually there's going to be a succession of the business. And all this life insurance and funding I'm talking about, this is how you uh, are able to keep the business moving smoothly, growing, and um, eventually, you know, the business owners, as they go to sell out or buy out, you're going to, you know, you need life insurance a lot of times for, uh, that's where you're going to want the funding on that. You know, life insurance is, you know, uh, you think of like pennies on the dollar, right? You give me, you give me a dollar, and I'm going to give you ten dollars back, or 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 a hundred thousand dollars, right? Because you could take the policy out and pay uh, fifty dollars for a premium. Just simplifying things here, and that gives you a hundred thousand. You drop dead. Well, you know, a hundred thousand is going to be that capital for either your your loved ones or for your business. Um, you know, a lot of times, so really the people you need is you need your insurance advisor, financial planner. They can a lot of times come together on that. A CPA comes into play and for sure a good attorney. A lot of times they work together and they're connected and they know how to they have the resources and the expertise to make sure everything is set up properly. Um, so any questions, you could email me at VIP at variousinsuranceplanning.com. I'm an independent insurance agent. I represent a lot of different insurance carriers in the life insurance, long-term care insurance, and annuities, right? So we know what all, each three of them do, right? You want to have everything set up always sooner than later. 
All right. And then you want to make sure you create agreements that go with it. And so uh, I could be reached at 248 393 3146. You can contact me or you can always schedule a time that is convenient for you. And anyhow, thank you for tuning in. And I want you to make it a great day. God bless.